stick rubbing here. Yep, with broken equipment, so there was kind of a bang from inside my um, new old XP machine. I went over the usual suspects, power supply stuff, and then I started looking at the graphics card a bit more detail. I took the graphics card out, looked around a bit, and saw this crap on the edge. And I checked the capacitors and in that great shape, so I think we're gonna try and change those two and see if we can get it to wake up. So, we've got some caps, and uh, I also cleaned up the card and made sure, uh, yeah, including making sure there's no capacitor debris, and also the same thing with the um, heat sink, too. Yeah, and then I took away the old. Um, Thermal paste, so I'm going to put new new thermal paste. I'm going to put it back together again. But anyway, we'll mm -hmm. have to see if these fit. So, I'm just going to check the capacitance. So, the first one, it seems to be yeah, pretty much not what it's supposed to be. I'll check the other ones. So, that's some um, mechanical clearance tested, so that'll be okay. So I'll just get some um, thermal paste and screw the heat sink back on again. Yeah, and then solder those into place. So that's the cap soldered in. Oh, I found some thermal paste. Oh, I just get rid of that light. Like, uh, cooler monster, so that's not that bad. So no, let's get it into place. I've got a nice big blob on it, so that will be spread on the edges like the original um, paste was. So anyway, now the card's back together again, ready for testing. I'm going to put it in another machine so that I don't, if it actually has some type of cascade failure, it's not a, like not only the capacitor is failing, then um, if it's going to damage something, it will damage on this other machine, which I is a less of an important retro machine for what I need. So, so let's plug it in and see what happens. Well, I slotted it in. Power cables in. Uh, well. Now, um, when you're dealing with capacitors, it's uh, important to know that if, if they're in a failure or in a place where they failed before, they might actually fail worse than they did before. So, I'm going to put the cover on and then put the power on. Because if they go puff, then they can actually, yeah, spread crap all over the place, and it's not good. So don't be sort of like very close to electrolytic capacitors when you're testing them. I'm not looking straight at them either. Just, just to be on the careful side. So I slotted it in. Power cables in. Uh, well. Now, um, when you're dealing with capacitors, it's uh, important to know that if, if they're in a failure or in a place where they failed before, they might actually fail worse than they did before. So I'm going to put the cover on and then put the power on. Because if they go puff, then they can actually yeah, spread crap all over the place. And it's not good. So don't be sort of like very close to electrolytic capacitors when you're testing them. I'm not looking straight at them either. Just, just to be on the careful side. And then as you might have already noticed, I don't have any monitor connected to the mats because I want to see if the card actually, yeah, wakes up a bit before I do that. So, just put it on. No bangs, no smoke, yeah, at least. So I'm just going to let it sit for a while and then um, I think I will actually try and get it connected to a monitor. Oh, display seems to be working. Now I must stress that this machine is, is another retro machine I just uh, picked up on the side and um, I'm actually uh, 
I actually don't remember if I actually booted it all the way to Windows, or it, even if it had. It, it's got a, th a hard drive installed, as you see, but I have no idea if any, anything of it works. But anyway, the main thing is that the graphics card seems to be restored, because I mean, yeah, it's not that an advanced piece of equipment uh, from those ages. So. so I would say mission accomplished. Hey, look at that. It's even booting into Windows. Surprise, surprise.